one of London's best fish and chip shops. Chip their own potatoes. I've got a really good batter recipe. And I've got some American friends coming around today, and I'm going to show them some proper old-fashioned English food making. They're going to love it. Joe. Oh, hi there. How George, are you? George, sorry. Good. <laughs> How are you? Alright. Not too bad. Well, Mate, I'm after, um, I'm going to do some fish and chips at home. But a real good one. With a nice little beer batter. Oh, I did. Um, I'm after some haddock or cod, but I think haddock's probably haddock the one. Uh, haddock this morning. Really beautiful from the West Country. Yeah? yeah, yeah absolutely marvellous. Look at them. Cool, Mike. Look at look that. The quality of them. Yeah, that is right. good. Look at the quality. Look how clean it is. So, George, like, when, when you're looking for the best fish possible, mm -hmm. right, what are the rules? It's kind of like you want nice clear eyes. Clear eyes. Smell like the sea, not yes. like fish. That's right. Uh, and the gills as well. Show us the gills trick. Yeah. Let's see if we've ever got that one so there. If you look at the gills, be they're very, beautiful very and red. red. Very, very red. Absolutely marvellous. If they're grey or, or dirty. Or grey the every door. I mean, a good fresh fish should be like this, for example. Like one of those, the eyes. If you look at a bass, for example, look at the eyes, look at that, look how red it is. Yeah, and the eyes should be absolutely like that. Now, what shall I do with them? Tell me which part you want. Um, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. If you can give me the tail end, the up, tail to, end? up to about here. Brilliant. Is that possible? Lovely, yes, with pleasure. Yes. Four of those? Yep, lovely. See you again. All the best. Bye-bye. See you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Have you been waiting long? No, we're just going. You like my scooter? Yeah, yeah you do, yeah, don't you? Nice. Here, come in, guys. I hope you're hungry. Ah. Welcome to my pad. What do you reckon? It's got the little bar. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Right. Ah. Just chuck your coats down, guys. Cool. England oh, treating you well? Not bad. Not bad, yeah. the weather. Yeah, weather weather's be a better. bit cold. Bit wet. <laughs> well, you got, you got the best part of the year to come now. Well, listen, right, I wasn't sure what I was going to cook you today because I thought, like, obviously you're missing home and stuff, and I don't know, I was going to do some sort of American-style stuff, but then I thought, no, we will do a bit of sort of old-school English cooking, yeah? Oh. So if I was going to say to you guys, have you ever tried a bit of spotted dick, what would you say? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> seriously, scary. seriously. Uh, no. I've never had I would say hopefully no. not. Have you ever heard of it? I'm no. no. I've well, heard of it, I don't know what it is. Okay, right, well... I've got one cooking, yeah, because I wanted you to try it. And okay. basically, it's an old school British uh, dessert. All right, and they called it Spotted Dick, basically because they used to call their dogs, I don't know, in the 18th century, they used to call all their dogs Dick, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> don't ask me why. <laughs> I really don't know why. And you know how, um, was it Hamden One Dalmatians? Dalmatians, they have all the spots and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. Because the dessert's got raisins in or sultanas, they call it Spotted Dick. But I think it scared foreign people for years. So I think yeah. you guys should try it. So okay. it's quite easy to remember. All you need is 120 grams of flour. And then I've got some breadcrumbs here. 120 grams of that too. Mm -hmm. um, I've got 120 grams of butter. You okay, get all that in there. I just grated it up so you can kind of stir it in easy. And then I've got um, 120 grams of white sugar. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Just bosh that in. Do you guys cook a lot? Yeah, occasionally. Yeah? Yeah, I try to. Yeah? Right, so you've got the sugar in there. And I want about 120 grams of apricots. Yeah? So in the, in the old days in England, they used to use a lot of dried fruit. Um, and around the 18th century, they used to, like, we were just getting, like, the ginger and, like, spices and stuff coming through. So we've got a few of those to go in as well. So who's good with the chopper? I am. I'm pretty yeah? good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, my main man. What we used to do, do you know how to chop? Yeah. I, Basically, I so. big knife, flat hand, uh -huh. just hold it at the tip and really sort of just, just chop and then use the knife to bring it all in like yeah. that and you can just run through like that and just bring it back. Bring so. it all right. That's it. Hands flat on the left one. Like this. Beautiful. Perfect. 
Well, an action. Uh, super. Super. Nice. So, nice. right, I need 240 grams of uh, raisins or sultanas. And then, here we go, a bit more. And they used to use a lot of all this sort of, you know, sort of dried fruit and stuff in the old days. You What's know? the difference between raisins and sultanas? Um, one's white grape, one's a red grape. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you've got different varieties of grape. But if you can imagine in the olden days, like, they didn't have things like strawberries and raspberries. And, like, even when they're not in season in England, like, we get them from France yeah. or like, South Africa because they just chuck them on the plane. So, you know, dried fruits were really important in those days. What I'm going to do is just bring it all together. And the nice thing is you just kind of chuck everything in the pot, you know. Here we go, just crack one egg in here. Here we go. And if you want to chuck your eight apricots in there, mm -hmm. and what else have we got? We've got a little bit of, bit, oh, that's a bit of shell there. Mm -hmm. Right, I want some nutmeg. So all I want to do is grate this in. About a quarter of um, a nut. Can you use like ground nutmeg or? You can use ground nutmeg, yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, I think sometimes it tastes a bit stale. Like okay. you, put, you put a teaspoon in and it doesn't really sm like smell or taste like a teaspoon of this stuff. So it's quite nice to use the whole stuff as well. But that um, flour, is, is it soft rising or does it matter? Or the, uh, the flour is just plain flour. Plain so, flour. I mean, we're going to get like, we will get a little bit of um, sort of, it will sort of rise a bit, but that's mainly from the egg. I just want a little bit of ginger. I want about two tablespoons of grated ginger in here. And this, it's quite nice to grate it, actually, because you kind of don't get all that stringy stuff in. Just get all the juice. Smells good. No, it does. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see it's quite, it's quite sort of, it looks quite kind of frumpy, you know? It's kind of quite, I don't know, oldie worldy sort of cottagey sort of, I don't know, sort of. I think, like, every, I know English food gets a really bad rap, but I think, like, all the, uh, all the like, really old-fashioned sort of desserts and stuff are fantastic. So we've got the ginger in there, and I've got an orange, and again, orange, bit of orange zest. Just get that in there. And it's funny because I, well, I, I have this every Christmas because in England we have like a Christmas pudding, yeah, mm -hmm. and Christmas pudding is just like a little bit too heavy and a bit dense, I think. So um, I kind of have this, and I think it's much lighter. A lot more tasty. Right, what I want to do is add a little bit of milk to this. Can you just uh, get me some milk yeah. in there? So you want about 140 millilitres of milk. Just get it in there. And then all we need to do is just mix it up. So, my main man, if you could stir that up for me. All right. You know how to stir? Yeah, I think so. I think I can handle it. <laughs> Get it all nice and mixed up. Now, what I've got here is I've got a sort of, we call these pudding basins, right? You can use any kind of glass bowl that's kind of nice and thick. You could use a, a metal tin if you wanted. It doesn't have to be round. It could be in a sort of terrine mold or something. You could do individual ones if you wanted. I've just rubbed it with a little bit of butter. And see what I've got from there? Just a little pinch of salt. Just to sort of, uh, whenever you use flour, you always put a bit of salt in. It seems to make it sort of taste a bit better. So, all right, let's have a little look, my friend. So. Ah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Now, what we want to do is just put this into the mould. Get it in there. Every last bit. And just flatten that out a little bit. Now, it looks pretty, pretty dense at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I've got some tin foil. Just put tin foil over like this. And just really tighten it up and basically what in the olden days what they used to do is the mothers used to have kids and no electricity and do all the washing and stuff like that they used to bash it like a nice big stew in like the rayburn like fired oven and they used to put this in as well in a pot of water and this takes about three hours to cook so it's quite a long time and obviously if you do little small individual ones um, you know it's a lot quicker so I've got one that I've cooked yeah, because I wanted you guys to like check it out pretty soon. Yeah. And you just pull it out of here. Yes. Mm. Beautiful. I'm going to pop this one in. Good. And you want the pot to be sort of half full of water, right? And then we want to put some tin foil on top, just so the steam all stays in. Bring it to the boil, let it simmer for about three hours. And what happens is, you ready for it? Ready? Right <laughs> Look at that. Wow. So it, it does expand a lot. And have a little smell of that, guys. Wow, 
Ah, that's right. Yeah. So delicious. Yeah. So here we go. Let's let's try a bit. That's great. <laughs> Little trick. Just put your plate on top, and then you have to be quick. You have to spin it round. <laughs> I, I nearly I nearly lost it then. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. Nice. Oh. Just about. Right. This is this is basically golden syrup, right? And I don't I don't I think you can only get it in British stores or yeah. delis or something in the states. But you could use maple syrup. But I think maple syrup's pretty strong tasting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it is. And uh, as soon as you turn it out, you just want to put a nice dollop of this on top. Look at that. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's good. That's it. So as you can tell, it's quite slimy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Wicked. So, here, try that. Give it a bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? It's not too sweet. It's, it's just... Um, yeah, yeah. It's not as strong as maple syrup. Right. No. We would always have either whipped cream or custard with something like this. And I'm going to give you not homemade custard, but bought custard. Because I think, even though I'm a chef, bought custard is the best custard. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's a bit tacky, but you know, <laughs> I think deep down there. So there you go, guys. That is your spotted dick. And when you go back yeah. to the States, cook that. Give it to your mum. Thank you, sir. You guys go and sit down, tuck into this, and I'll show you the next thing. Of course. Thank you. Sweet. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the best fish and chips, yeah? And if you're going to do fish and chips, you've got to have a classic English thing, which is mushy peas, right? And basically, when I was a kid, I used to hate mushy peas because they were made out of tin peas, and they went really grey, and it was horrible. Have you, have you had mushy peas? No. No, no. Does it sound gross? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm just going to prove to you that it's not gross, yeah? Right guys, to make this fantastic minty mushy pea recipe, take the ends of a big bunch of spring onions and finely slice. You want to add it to a pan with about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and just put them in there and slowly fry for about two minutes with a little pinch of salt. You want to soften them up, you see, and make them nice and sweet. Now, with a big bunch of mint, roughly chop them and put them in with the onions. That will begin to sort of wilt them down, you can mix them up a little bit and it will smell fantastic. Add about 500 grams of frozen peas and give them a little stir and get all those lovely flavours around it. Give it about two minutes before placing the lid on and very slowly cooking for about 12 minutes. Place it into a food processor and really whiz it up until it's really nice and smooth. And then I just want to season to taste and add about two big knobs of butter. That will make it really shiny. Put it into a dish, a little bit of mint and butter on top and you'll love it. It's really good. Okay, so we've got my minty mushy peas, yeah, nice and warm. And now I'm going to do fish and chips, yeah, the best fish and chips. So the first thing to do, to make the best, I mean, chips are pretty important, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah, very. And like, you can have big ones, thin ones, you know, you call them french fries, don't you? French fries, yeah. yeah. And uh, to start with, you need a nice floury potato, yeah, you don't have to peel them. And what I do is whether you leave the skin on or off, you want about a centimetre slice of potato. So I'll get two slices out of that. And then I'm just going to do a centimetre across, like that, and you've got your chip. Now, obviously, if you want them smaller, you just cut them smaller. Um, and sometimes the French do really fat ones, chunky chips. So that's our chips. Now, what we want to do is we need to blanch them, which is a kind of French word for kind of cooking without any colour, yeah? So basically, what we have to do is I've got a fryer over here, and it's on about 120 degrees. And this is like a posh fryer, it's got a thermostat and all that. And they're not actually that expensive, but I've cooked these for about five minutes and they've got no colour at all, but they're a little bit soft, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's now, I've turned it up to 170, so we can fry them really, really good. And, uh, and if you wanted to do them in a sort of normal chip pan, that's absolutely fine. So, batter. What I want is a couple of bowls. And I need a half pint glass and some flour. And bro, can you get us some beer out the fridge? Uh, no problem. There's a big bottle of uh, beer on the side. You want to do, um, like, half, this is like a kind of half pint cup, yeah, roughly. Um, you want to do one cup of flour, and that's not American cups, that's like a half pint cup, yeah, right. or glass, like this. Into that bowl. 
And then I've got some beer. You can kind of use any beer you like. And, oh no, you'd think I'd be out of pour them. I grew up in a pub, and you'd think I'd be out of pour beer, man. That's <laughs> terrible. Here we go. Okay, that's half of one. And a bit more. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so we've got some beer, and that's for me. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want a good pinch of salt in there, and then an egg. Get an egg from over here. Now, who's got a good whipping action? Mm. I'll do it. Come on, you guys. So, I want egg whites in here, and I'll put my egg yolk in here, just because there's no point in wasting it. Now, get a good whisk. All right, darling, this is your moment. All right. Give us a good old whip. I put a little bit of salt in there. It normally helps it get nice and stiff. And I'm just going to whisk this up. You basically want to make a nice sort of thick, sort of porridgey sort of consistency batter. So is there anything you can use other than beer, like if you didn't want to do Yeah, you could, well, you could normally use water. Sometimes use milk. Um, some cultures use kind of water and yogurt. Um, we're using beer because it makes it kind of nice and fluffy and nice and malty, you know. And... Um, <laughs> no, I'm not saying a thing. Right, the, the reason I'm doing this is because you know how you can tell when that egg white's done? Because you can hold them over your head. Oh, are, you, really? are you confident enough that that's not going to fall on your no. head? No. Right, you better do it real hard. Because <laughs> I've got to hold it over my head. Let's have a little yeah. go. <laughs> Do you reckon that'll fall on my head? Or your head? <laughs> That's good. Go on then. Over yours? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> She's good. <laughs> wow. Right, what you want to do you is just upset. get your egg whites, because you've got all that air in there now, and that's going to make your batter really, really crisp. So, you want to just carefully fold that in like that. And that is a wicked batter. And even if you're going to do like some, like, you know, like tempura vegetables and stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. like you can just cut up some zucchini, some peppers, some onions, stuff like that, all sorts of different stuff, and just dip it in this deep fryer, and it'll be really, really nice. So, we've got the batter, mushy peas, chips are on the go. Excuse me, sweetheart. I've got a nice bit of fish. And the whole thing about, I mean, the classic sort of English fish and chips is like cod or haddock. And in those days when we were doing it, it was like really widely available and very cheap. But obviously you can do skate or monkfish. So look, you've got a beautiful fillet of fish, really fresh, it's got no scales, right? But I leave the skin on because it's kind of quite nice when you uh, deep fry it. It makes it sort of a little bit more tasty, I think. And you just dip the fish in the batter like this. And what I'm going to do now is this fryer's at about 180 degrees. I'm going to put my chips down, right, which need about three or four minutes. And the fish is so thin that it only needs kind of the same, really. So here we go. Sort of, you want to kind of get the excess batter off. Just give it a little shake. And you want to just pour it in the fat and just sort of tip it away from you very carefully. Four minutes later, fish and chips. <laughs> or you can go down to your local fish and chip shop and you can buy it. Get <laughs> so, cool. If you don't have a deep fryer at home, can you just use like a... You just get a pan. pan. You just get a pan, you put about two inches of oil in there, sunflower oil or, or vegetable oil. Okay. And uh, you just kind of, you can put like a bit of a piece of potato in there. So that tells you when it's kind of a frying temperature because it will start floating and frying and stuff like that. Okay. And then you can do your chips or your, or your fish or your vegetables or whatever. Have you ever had fish and chips? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you not? No. Oh, bless. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a funny thing, I tell you. The thing is, it's like anything. Like, if it's done properly, it's a really, really good. And if it's not done properly, it's kind of really boring. Yeah. Right, guys, check this out. After about four minutes, give it a good shake. Right, and if you've got a good batter and you've got good chips, it won't be actually that greasy, or it shouldn't be, right? So you give it a good shake on some kitchen paper and maybe a little bit of sea salt. Mm. Like that, and make it nice and crisp. Now, this is a bit, right, because you, now, now you're in England, right, you've got to be like, you know, they might think you're tourists, right, and if they think you're tourists, it's like anywhere, you know, they're going to rip you off, yeah? yeah. So, yeah. when you go for fish and chips, you walk in the shop, and you say, uh, can I have some fish and chips, please? Go on. Can I have some fish, you've got to say it like English, yeah. Can I have some fish, can and, some fish and chips, some please? Fish and chips, <laughs> <laughs> right, so you've done that, yeah. and then they're, they're going to say to you, do you want them wrapped or open? 
wrapped or open. Do you know what that means? Yeah. 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 Wrapped, yeah. I'll take yeah. it away, or open to eat on the way walking. Yeah. Right? So you want them open, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Right? And then, we in England, we always wrap them in paper, yeah? So, we're going to wrap them in a little bit of paper. So, we have our beautiful bit of crispy. Look at that, how crispy that is. Oh, nice. right? And in the olden days, right, the batter wasn't to be eaten. It was just to sort of protect that beautiful fish. So it almost steamed inside. Yeah. So people started eating it, and then they started going, oh, I really like the, the batter and stuff, yeah. you know? So they started eating it all the time. So we've got the chips, we've got the fish, you've got your mushy peas, right? Yeah. But it gets worse, right? <laughs> then they say, do you want a wally? Do you know what a wally is? No. A wally is like a gherkin. It's like a dill okay. pepper, yeah? yeah? So you have one of those as well. And then if they're really gross, <laughs> right, and they do, every fish and chip shop will have these, yeah? Do you want a pickled egg? <laughs> have you tried it? I've never had a pickled egg. Do <laughs> you want to try a pickled egg? Uh, I'll try a pickled egg. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you what, I used to love these as a kid, right? And try that, my friend. Thank you. Quite strong. <laughs> Vinegar flavor. It's not good, is it? <laughs> so listen, right, you guys go over there. I'm going to do right. your fish and chips. I'll bring the sauces and everything. Nice one, guys. Well, it's been a good old day, a bit of old-fashioned English food. See you next time. Take care.